Jehova Blak. Hola Molamat. Jehova Blak. Yami Blakis. Jehova Gadol. Makari and Tios. Jehova Erdanai. Jehova Elohim. Kurios Tios Panta Kreta. Kurios Tios Pistos. Elda et Ehova, Yel Emuna Yehova. Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, O Panta Kreta. Baslios, Baslion, Kai Kurios, Kurio. Yehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal. Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura. El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos. Ton Christoni Sunton Kurion Kurion Yumahagion Pantakreta Gadol Gadol Kepura Yehova Ishmal Kam Yehova Shamma Yelnakum Yehova Yelnakum Yapa Natsak Israel La Sheker Gava Gava Triambos Yehova Jesus Christos, Pata Kreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Mororos Nasa, Elohim Elohim. Ilela Eshalut, Yehovah Malak. Yehovah Malak, Olam Olam Ad. Yehovah Elohenu, Yehovah Ekat, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Zoan Logan Oga Tautios Dulas Desmias Despotes Dikaesune in Isus Christos Kurion 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 Hagion 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 Numa Pantacreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Derek Yemunabakar Mishfat Shawa the Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness for training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing, as Proverbs chapter 6 emphasizes in verse number 24 and following, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. The flattery of the tongue is nothing but your brethren, to divert your mind from discipleship program. The passage can be literally applied to the standards of the men who fall into seduction by the talk of a woman. But this passage also could be applied to the people who are teaching false doctrines, emphasizing to forsake the great principle of becoming disciples in the word of the Lord our God. John 5.43 
have Lord of God said, I come, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you shall receive. So how is going to come in his own name? He is going to forsake the discipleship program. He is going to let go the principle of becoming grammatias to the word of Lord God. So he says, If another shall come in his own name, him you shall receive. That is, lambano, to take him. And then in verse 44, How can you believe which you receive honor one of another? And seek not the honor that come from God only. The word seek meant to say zatio, which meant to say to keep in order or to make up the things by finding out, by thinking, by meditating or inquiring. So you are not he says in simple words, you are not meditating, you are not thinking, you are not inquiring. The word zatio meant to say, you are not meditating, you are not thinking. From where are you going to get this honor or this doxa? judgment, opinion. You are taking the honor of one another rather than looking into the honor which cometh only from God. The reason is you are receiving some other person who is going to come in his own name rather than the name of God the Father. And that's the great problem for us. As I said, keep away from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. That means teaching or daubing you with untempered mortar and not putting your foundation in the right word of the Lord, our God. So, dear brethren, many false spirits or false men have ran, though they haven't been sent by the Lord God, who have come to these pulpits according to the lustful patterns of their own old sin nature, who are minding not the things of Lord God, but rather who are been thinking upon the details of this life alone to be number one priority. So, dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's continue after this prayer what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in a pretty past the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this prayer. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, once again coming into the grace of Lord to learn the truth. What a marvelous privilege it is, O Lord, to understand Your marvelous grace. Day by day, which you have been renewing upon our lives to bear us, Though we are grieving and squelching and vexing and lying and resisting, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that we could come to the mind of a conclusion of Psalms 118 verse 17, we shall not die but live in order to declare your great wonders, your great works to this perishing and unbelieving world. Help us, O Lord, to get ourselves transformed to the standards of thy word, which is so much essential for us to understand in the present Christendom, as such, where we have left over many, many great pale wonders of the truth, and we have been just inculcating the stupid standards of our viewpoint of life. So, Father, as we go into study which are prepared and kept for us on today's date, in a twenty past to the praise of your glory. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. So, dear brethren, as we were looking yesterday, the real life for the believer begins when he realizes the enemy called to be the Satan 
is constantly looking out upon you whether there is any wickedness found in you to be given to God the Father on your behalf that you are not worthy to enjoy the place which Satan has lost by its pride and rebellion character. So, many are called, few are chosen. Sufficient is the evil you have for that particular day, which causes you not to learn the word of Lord God, which causes you not to grow up into the discipleship program, which makes you not to become the grammatias or the scribes of the word of Lord God. So yet, though you have such sort of pressures and trials and temptations in your life, it is the number one thing for us to wake up to the standards of the truth of Christ and become to realize the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to be the indwelling one in us. The Dunamis power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to such a great extent that we can become to understand the sufficiency of evil what we have in that particular day is nothing before the pale wonders of his grace. So dear brethren, the things what the world is looking today without looking upon the knowledge of Bible doctrine, the things which you and I should really make up our life to be the word of Lord God. And if we people are not able to realize them, are not able to look unto them, are not able to grow up according to the standards of them, then for sure, dear brethren, we have left the pale wonders of his marvelous glory. In Psalm 118, when we find this great word, it should really prick everyone to get into the list of the pride of the Lord of a God. Because when we read in Isaiah 49 in verse number 18, the word bride represents the people who have been able to grow up into grammatias and in return who are able to become or make disciples of all the nations. You know, today being the first day of the second month of this calendar year, 2023. Many churches ritually are to say that we have to give thanks to the Lord because he has put us into this new month. So on the first of the day of this new month, early morning, we wake up, we assemble as a church and we give thanks. And we say, Lord, you have been worthy to receive praises from us because you have done this, you have done that. You have protected us from last month to this month. And they may go on to say they are really giving praises to the Lord. But you know the point. What is just a note of giving praises to the Lord when you are not able to do the work of the Lord? And the work of the Lord is to grow up into grammatias. The work of the Lord is to go and make disciples. 3.2 billion people yet to be reached. The remaining left over, 3.8 billion people have to conform to the image of Christ. So morning you wake up in this new month and you may say, we will praise the Lord, we will do this, we will do that. We praise Him because He has kept us safe. He has been giving us our daily food. We are having a breath in our nostrils. We have been so great and we have been so good because of the faithfulness, goodness. He is always the same. But when you walk contrary to the word of Lord God, when your soul detests and abhors about the word of Lord God, then he walks contrary unto you. Then he is going to make up his soul to be an abhorment of you. That's what we look in Deuteronomy chapter 9 or Leviticus chapter 26. When your soul do not love the prescription demands of the word of Lord God, he says in Deuteronomy chapter 9, Though he has brought you out of the land flowing with milk and honey, of a bought out of the land, uh, in, uh, bought out of the land of pressure, and he put you into the land of milk and honey, he says, emphasizing the point, 
when the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land which I have given you, you have rebelled against the commandment of the Lord. You know what you are doing? You are rebelling. The word rebel is called as mara, to be contentious, to be disobedient. So what you're doing there, you're making up in your head not to make the word of Lord God to flow. Or your blood is not able to flow as per the demands of the word of Lord God. That's what it happens. So he says mara, contentious. Your head is being weak because the blood is not able to be pumped as per the demands of the word of Lord God. So he says, emphasizing that you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God and you believed him not. You know, when you fail to take up your cross and follow my Christ, when you fail to become what is the word of Lord God, when you fail to become what are the demands of Lord's mind, you know, then what exactly he says? You have not believed and that's the point when you're not able to believe your blood and in that the vigor and valor gets deteriorated you'll not have that strength it gets deteriorated and then he said not your hearkened because the wall of fortification and the thing that which should run your body is not able to fix your eyes permanently on the word of Lord God. Therefore, he said, you have been rebellious. And the point of rebellious meant to say again, Mara, against the Lord your God from the day that I knew you. You know, that's what it happens, dear brethren. The same illustration what we can find over here for us when he said in the same principle of Leviticus chapter 26. Here also he said to them in verse number 43 saying that the land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her sabbaths while she lieth desolate without them. The word desolate meant to say there is no proper thought process in their blood which could be as per the demands of the word of Lord God. And then he said, they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity. And today, if you don't confess, what is the punishment of your iniquity? Because you have despised the judgments and because your soul abhorred. The word abhor meant to say, dear brethren, as Gael. What is the meaning of Gael? You have erected a structure according to the viewpoint of your life, which is not and never disciple-oriented. That's the word Gael. So he says, your soul has abhorred my prescription demands. And then he further says, because you have rejected the demands of the word of Lord God, and because you have been rebellion towards the word of Lord God, so he says, you are not able to realize the worth of this life. You are not able to realize so what he will do? He said, you are going to die. Now that's what the problem is today in the present people. They don't understand why they are falling into sickness. They don't understand why they are becoming according to the standards of this world, which is not in accord with the word of Lord God. They are not able to realize. So all the days of this life, they're receiving honor and seeking honor of man. They're not thinking, they're not meditating, they're not calculating. That which has been demanded in the word of Lord God, they don't even think on that. So dear brethren, that which is of God, the demands of the word of Lord God, and why these people, they have left the demands of the word of Lord God? Because they loved lie. They loved the pleasure of men. They are daubing you with untempered mortar. And they are making you to rebel against the commandments of the word of Lord God. That's what they love to do. 
So we have a passage for us in Ezekiel chapter 4 in verse number 9 where it emphasizes between the standards of wheat and barley from there on he reduces into the standards of a mixed coarser grains so here when we look upon wheat and barley they are to some extent a quality of a good food but later on if you would look the things pertaining to the remaining standards of what we can find the mixture of remaining four lentils or beans or some other thing it represents the scarcity of the food the same thing over here to show the necessities of life should be during the siege so here in ezekiel 49 what we look first beginning with wheat and barley he says that no longer you're going to be having just wheat and barley but are going to go to mix with several kind of grains and make it to last longer and then which the prophet has commanded to take he shows that the scarcity of the food which comes during the siege and he says 390 days and then 40 days 390 days to the left and 40 days to the right and here you know what does he meant to say he intends to show that though they have been given much importance or much uh, much revolution through the word of lord god these people they did not look to stand by wheat and barley they reduced to some sort of lower standards of thinking and that lower standards of thinking what he says in ezekiel chapter 11 should be a shocking for us to look because he said the spirit lifted me up and brought me into the east gate of the lord's house which looketh eastward and behold at the door of the gate 525 20 men among whom i saw zazania the son of azur and palatia the son of benania princes of the both people then said he unto me son of man these are the men that devise mischief you know the mischief is nothing but looking into the lower standards of thinking the mischief is nothing but devising plans which are far away from discipleship program so he said devising mischief and give wicked counsel in this city who are this the word he said zazania the word zazania meant to say yehovah hears and then we can find as the word goes on to say particularly among the muslim we find this word called as azan aza meant to say or azan actually with a real word it meant to say to hear to listen to be obedient or to hear to listen or to perform their in a day five times rituals they go and attend their mosques that's what they call azan so here azan yohova the word should be zazania what we look in the english it has to be azan yohova so what you do every thought you get into the captivity for christ by digging and taking it into the vigor and virality of the life of yours you know the real vigor the real valor is nothing but the driving the things that the thinking that drives in you so what is that drives in you it has to be the word of lord god and nothing else than that the one that drives you all the time should be the word of lord god therefore he said azan is nothing but your brethren not just the common way of life as these people that trying to live what to eat what to drink where to get a good permanent job a government job you know that's what they're trying i think if they're having every month their money in their pocket they can earn like this they can become like this they can show off with good clothes and they can say they've really been living a luxurious life you know the rich man also lived his life comfortably it was not allowed you're trying to wake up your lives in such a standards of honoring men in such a way that you're thinking getting to live such a life is enough or to make up your life in those standards is enough 
but are not able to realize that the real vigor, the driving force that drives the man on this earth has to be when we dig and take the word of Lord God. So as we dig and take the word of Lord God in Psalms 118 in verse 17, Matthew 13, 52 stands good. Disciple joined growing up into Cramatius in the will of the Lord. Matthew 13, 52 stands good. That's the reason he said, I shall not die but live and declare it is not Nagate, it is called to be so fair that meant to say like a scribe I'm going to live my life and he says I shall declare and what does he declare he declares the pale wonders of his truth and what does he go to describe he said I will declare the works of salvation the word works over here is very, very important, which we are actually lacking in the present Christendom. You know, the first thing you are not able to fix upon your mind to declare the word of Lord God. And therefore, we can find in Psalms 118 in verse number 17 to forget the meaning of the word works. You know, the word works over here is called to be Masse. And the word Masse is what? The undertaking, the enterprise, the business, the achievement, the deeds or works are the thing which you need to do. So he says the business, the pursuit, the undertaking. So what are you going to take or what are you going to look? He said no matter what, fix your eyes in such a manner that you are going to build up as per the demands of the word of Lord God. So no matter what it is, build up as per the demands of the word of Lord God. So that's what we find when he says the word. Must say, what is your business? What are the works that you need to declare? So that under any pressure of your life, fix your eyes upon the word of Lord God. And when you're fixing your eyes upon the word of Lord God, simply take up your cross. And follow my Christ because there are many things which you should know. The azan, the thing which you have been called for Jehovah, azania the word is. Azan is the thing that which really drives you on this earth. The thing that which causes you to breathe on this earth. The thing that which makes you to take why it is necessary the next breath for you on this earth. The thing which drives you, the thing which goes on to perform that, you know what it is? When you dig and take the word of Lord God, the true meaning of this life. Apart from that, the luxuries of your life, the stupidity to show forth before great celebrities of this life, all those things are nothing but vanities and lies. Apart from that, whatsoever you're having, it's absolutely lie. They cannot carry you for that. They cannot take you for that. As you may think you can be taken for that, but the word of Lord God says, no, you cannot. Because whatsoever the other things, what you're performing or thinking, is absolute vanity. You don't have anything else. The only word, Zazania, and what is that? What does he say? Does he say good about Zazania? No, dear brethren, the word of Lord God doesn't talk good about Zazania. He said, Zazania, the son of Azor. The meaning of Azor is called to be he that is associated. The word is Azar, meant to say supports. The viewpoint of life, digging and taking, and having your head. He says, it is being just associated to look upon the real life. But the word Azor over here meant to say, these people, they are now looking the viewpoint of your life. They are digging and taking their life in such a manner that you have been renovated to talk the terms of man, to receive the honor from man. You have been looking to be doped up with untempered mortar by the solutions of man. 
That's what he said. Azar. Your viewpoint of life in such a way that are not able to wake up to the reality of truth. And that's how it happens all the time in this life. So dear brethren, he says, Azar, fixing your eyes not to dig as per the word of Lord God. But actually his father Azar should be digging up the word of Lord God and he should give to his son to say, Azan, make up your prayer to dig and take in such a manner you have been driving in the force of word of Lord God. Make up your life in such a great standards of such truth. But you know what did he do? He did not continue in such life. So the third one, he said, the son of Benia, the word Benia meant to say Yehovah, which he has built. And the word what Yehovah builds is nothing but Bana Yehovah, which is called to be Benia. It meant to say your body has been driven by the vigor of Yehovah's thinking. And nothing else than that. All other thing which all you are taking, your food, your diet, your medicine, your exercise, just keep aside, they're worthless. You may say, have. <laughs> Jehovah builds you according to his word. Not that what you're going to keep up your diet, what he has given for you to work, work. Putting for your feet the gospel of grace. Go and tell, there are so many people. 3.2 billion people have yet to be reached have it to be known. Don't eat and become slumber lying upon your bed. Time is short. Don't waste your time sleeping. Don't waste your time to think this is the end of my life. Don't waste your time to think I am such and such. Because tomorrow you will regret for each and every day as we read the word cool of the day. Every day, 24 hours, in that if you would calculate 86,880 seconds, they belong to my Christ, the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You have to make sure you redeem that time. You have to make sure walking according to that time. Your 86,880 seconds of that particular day, they belong to Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So don't make you're just going to kill the day. There are people to be reached, 3.2 billion men who haven't known my Christ. There are 3.8 billion men where we have to evangelize them to the word of Lord God. We have to teach them as per the demands of the word of Lord God. And we cannot sleep at the cost of such perishing souls. At least we need to pray for the salvation so that Lord God could send. As I said, pray for the Father to send the laborers who could be righteous enough in the sight of Lord God. Pray for them, as he said. And you know what we're doing today? We are not praying. We are not giving up our life. And what we are happening, we are ending up in sickness. So for sickness, he will say, we should have a better control of our health. Walking is needed. Jumping is needed. Running is needed. Dancing is needed. And now you have the emotional patterns. Talk good. So that the influence of other person cannot have influence upon your mind. So be good. So talk slowly melodiously. You know how man has become, if you look in the same chapter as we are looking in Ezekiel 11, 1, actually he should be built by Yehovah. He should have been to be assisted in that building. Like the word what we find, Azan Yehovah. 
He should have been all the time educating himself day and night in the word of Lord God. Planning to do the will of Lord God, but he doesn't go for Azan Yehovah. He doesn't go for Azur Yehovah. Neither is going for Bana Yehovah. And he thinketh his life is in the food. He thinketh his life is in the standards of his great medicine or great diet or great riches. <laughs> Jehovah Lord of God will not build you in such a way. He's going to build us only in the way when we are able to make up our life to be in the vigor and valor as per the demands of the word of Lord God. If we are not in those demands, if we are not according to those ways, then what all other things which are calculating or planning, Everything is absolute vanity, dear brother. Everything. So here he says about these three categories of the people. Then said he unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise. The word devise is called kasab. And what is this kasab? They estimate. They calculate. They invent. They imagine. So what do they imagine? They first look where your thought process could be cut off and they make it your thought process to come to depend upon man. So how it could be cut off? Spread lies, constantly bombard them lies as Rabshakak does in Second Kings or Isaiah 35, 37, what we read. And there we also look in 2nd Kings chapter 18, this great word what Rabshakak tries to manipulate the minds of these people. He said in verse 25, Am I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it? The Lord said unto me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Now that's what these people, they think. And again he said in verse 28, Then Rabshakak stood and cried out with a loud voice in the Jews' language and spake, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. You know what is this Assyria? Straight thinking. Asher, the word should be. So what this word Yasher will be? It meant to say, dear brethren, their thought process which has been there absolutely to the thinking of man's solution. So that's what they do over here. That's what we are looking. Device, cache, what they do? The very first thing, they divert your thinking. They make you to think so that without that you cannot survive and they make you all to follow that thinking. In simple terms, they make you to forgo the word of God. So, for example, invention of many great things in this present science world, which is growing up so speedily. And what you do over there? You think upon in the standards, stating that my son and daughter also should be a good engineer or a doctor. In this present competitive world, they should know. They should be more in speed, more in achievement. So what they do now? They divert from the real burden of the reason why God the Father gives the godly children. Malachi chapter 2 verse 14 and following. And they fail. Now they have been cut off the thinking from what could be the solid base for the children. What could be the ultimate reality or life for those children? Say so they cut off your thinking from that. So when that cut off has been removed, then you love to look yasher. So now you say, what is the thinking? What could be the renovated standards of this life? 
So what you concentrate now? So you concentrate upon the thinking like the king of Assyria. That's what he said in Rapshakak. Do not think Jehovah is with us, he sent us. And what they do? They come to devise this criminal inventions, criminal schemes. That's what they do. They come to give them this criminal viewpoint of life, criminal thinking of life. And they continue this rest of life. So here, when they are devising such wicked imaginations, that's what God the Father lifts up the spirit, lifts him with the spirit, Ezekiel, and then he shows, Zazaniya, actually these people should be Azan Yehovah. This should, these people should be Azur, associated for the will of God. These people, Benaniya, whom Lord God the Father has built up, they should be actually performing the will of Lord God. They should be actually looking upon the glory of Lord God. But what are you finding? No reality of truth in their life, no reality of marvelous glory in their life. And they're simply continuing to plan wicked imaginations and they're cutting off your thinking. They're cutting off your level of thinking to be wall of fortification as per in the word of Lord God and they're putting now the level of thinking as per their head. As per the think, yes, this is right, we need to follow. Isn't it true that you reach by the age of such and such and you get all those things to be changed? So they say, yes, it is true, we have to go. <laughs> Till to the age of 120, the vigor and valor of Moses was the same. He said in Deuteronomy 9, 40 days I spent in the presence of Lord God the Father without food and water. And Lord God said to him, What is that noise, O Lord? Your people have already left the paths, the statutes, the prescription demands which are given for them. They became for them like an abhorment. They're thinking that it is not necessarily good for them. You know, the man who said, Till to the age of 120 years, his eyesight was not dimmed. His vigor and valor of his flesh was the same. But on the other end, today, the thinking has been so much changed. People are diverting from that wall of fortification of standardized thinking. And they are now just looking upon into the viewpoint of the thinking of men. Just thinking in the thinking of men. And what they're getting as per the thinking of the thinking of men, just look. They consider it is tried. By the age of 10, they discover something. Age of 20, they discover something in the morphisms in the body. The age of 40, they discover something. And if in one brain we are having 300 greater than the galaxy, or the Milky Way galaxy of new, of these stars in our brain, which is somewhere around 300 times greater than the Milky Way galaxy. If one Milky Way galaxy can contain 300 to 400 million stars, billion stars, then how much more your brain has the neurons? It is 300 to 400 times greater than what a Milky Way galaxy star can hold or a galaxy can hold. That meant to say what you have been uh, 300 or 400 times greater capacity of storage than what this Milky Way galaxy is all about where we are now. And you're giving so little of information to your brain. You're taking so little of work through your brain. Which you will be really shocked. You'll be really shocked. And there you can look and understand. 
Up to what extent you have really been shocked? Because the true meaning of your life begins when you are really taking upon to cut off the thinking of man. As Rapshaka challenges, do not think Jehovah has sent us. Jehovah has called us to destroy you. So come, let's make a league with the king of Assyria. <coughs> so when you're making up your league with the king of Assyria, you find, yes, it is true. And who has said it is true? What has to be for your body in your sugar or diabetic? What it has to be for your body for hypertension? What it has to be for your body for the reason you're surviving to eat and drink in time to time? As Ezekiel was also told in chapter 4, eat the food in several periods of time, drink several periods of water to prove that there will be scarcity. Though there was a rich standards of wheat and barley, people will fall for such scarcity of food. That meant to say what though you have been given rich development of the apocalyptic revolution in Genesis, from Genesis to Revolution, the word of Lord God, yet you are dying for that mixed grains attitude kind of a food. The wealthy of a food has been given, you are operating your life as if you are under a seed. And where there is no proper revolution or proper description of the word of Lord God, you are just following the flattery of a tongue of a woman, of a strange woman, who leadeth you for your own captivity. And the pastors are failing to discover your nakedness. That's what he said in Ezekiel, in Lamentations chapter 4, in verse number 13. The prophets have failed to look your sin. They have failed to expose your sin. And what they think, is it not true that by the age of 40 you lose this, by the age of 80 you will lose this, by the age of 80 or 90 you are going to die and people will give a witness. You know, this valuable life which God the Father has given for you, it is not actually designed to die. What man has sinned? God the Father put him into the test. And that test itself is saying, don't disobey my word. As Satan rebelled. And disobeying that word, he said, To die you shall die, or dying you shall die. And when you're disobeying that, the same pattern continues in this life as well. Your body has not been designed for death. But that Adam's original sin at the moment of your physical birth inculcated for you. That's the reason all men have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Except Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, born of a virgin birth, no, incul no inculcation of this Adam's original sin for him. So he has been born spiritually. So there is no death. But for us, we have been born physically and we are spiritually dead. So being born again in Christ, you shall live forever when you are able to make up your place into the <coughs> wedding invitation of Lord God with the wedding garments. That's what you will have your life. But the problem with us is we are not able to make up our life as per those demands of the word of Lord God. You're not able to look into that. So, dear brethren, <coughs> your body is not actually designed for death. The sin entered and causes this body to die. Only Christ, our Lord of our God, has the resurrection body to prove that who followeth him shall have the same resurrection body, fulfilling this great trial of life in this pilgrimage process to attain the valuable wisdom of the word of Lord God. That's what you have been called. That's what your transformation is all about, conforming to the image of Christ. 
That's what the solid reason and the purpose of your life is all about. But you know, people are not able to learn. Though the word says in 2 Timothy 3, 7, ever learning but never able to come to the epinosis knowledge of truth, so you people are not even able to learn. Because the people they are teaching you, the one who are teaching you, these are the ones who have been already distorted from their way of life. The life of discipleship program, the life of grammatias program, the life which Christ our Lord our God said, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. That's the real life for us. That's the true life for us. But these people, they are ever learning. And by that, they are learning by going towards the path and the precepts of man. They are not able to come to the path and the precepts of the demands of the word of Lord God. So in 2 Timothy 3.7, he said, Ever learning, the word pantote, at all the time, mantano, what mantano? They are becoming to be as increasing in the knowledge. You know, there are really two kinds of mantanos. Mantano, who is a real disciple to the word of Lord God, Having to receive the thinking of Lord God, he searches the scriptures diligently. That's what we look from John 5, 39 through 42. Since they love the Lord God, they go to search the scriptures diligently. And since they don't love the word of Lord God, they will be Montano. What? The Montano of the category to say, increasing one's knowledge. They have been informed, they have been to practice, they have been in the habit of getting a comstead. What they have been getting into the habit of a comstead? Come weekly ones to the church. So such is this category what we find over here. They are comstead to such life. So dear brethren, he says, they learn. They have been Increasing, ever learning, they want to become Pantato Mantano. At all times, they want to be disciples. At all times, they want to increase their knowledge. But they're no way disciples at all. And the church is running today to receive honor from men, to put, to think, to meditate upon the standards of men. Therefore, they're falling sick. They don't know the real essence of their life. How powerful is the body which God the Father has designed you, has formulated you, everyone he called them, if he can call the stars of the heaven, everyone by the name, then how much you would be thinking upon to what extent before the foundation of the world he could separate you and say that it pleased God right from the mother's womb to separate you and to reveal in you the revolution of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that you can go and proclaim the same revolution of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to all the world. You know how beautifully, wonderfully you have been designed, he said in Psalms 139. And the words, how beautifully and wonderfully you have designed, he says, like a scribe. But you know why the man is, to, is able to die and not to become the scribe? He has been constantly worried upon the things pertaining to what is with his opposite sex, category 2 and category 3. Since he is concentrating category 2 and 3 love more than category 1 love, which is to be well established in the relationship of God the Father, that is category 1. If you have been well established in the relationship with God the Father, though the viewpoint of Enoch, what we read, he walked his life 300 years with the Lord God and yet he begat sons and daughters, though that could be the life he thought, but greater than that his fellowship with Lord God was more important. And that was the brilliancy, that which has been lacked in our pulpits today. So dear brethren, here we look. The life which has been given for us to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is something vast and unique. If we break that, category 1, if we break that, then you're going to get occupied in category 2 and 3. The worthless things, naked you come, naked you go, nothing you take and go from this world. And yet you're worrying for such worthless things, category 2 and category 3 love. 
And therefore, at a very early age, you begin to build up with sickness in your body. Because your body should be actually used by Lord God to the praise of His glory, but this body is not bending His knees. This body is not going to become the disciple program. This body is not able to become the grammatious program. So what happens when your body is not able to do so? And automatically your knees are not bending before the presence of the Lord. When your mindset is not trembling for the will of the Lord, for the fear of the Lord. Your mindset is not craving for the marvelous glory of the Lord. Then you will come weekly once to the church. You will go monthly once to the temple. And they are going to die, sin unto death. That's why you begin sickness in your body. Because you are not giving top number one priority for the category one love in the Lord. You are not procuring that. You are not developing that. Since you are not able to develop your number one priority for the love of Lord God, for the work of Lord God, for the will of Lord God, Quite obviously, dear brother, when your category two and three will be number one. Opposite sex and the family and the friends. Category two is opposite sex, category three is family and the friends. So then quite obviously what happens? Your details of life will become and come into vanity. Your thinking will become vanity. And automatically will love to live your life by thinking excess of stress, excess of strain. Because you lost your wife and you were there with some other woman and you gave to that woman everything. And now the children of that woman, they have grown up. And those children will kick you out of the home. And you get worried. So you think it is better for me to go back to my place from where I came and there you die. The reason of death, <laughs> where you martyr for Christ, where you having anything worthy in your body that you can claim that I fought a good fight to the Lord. So what do you die? Some love failure, some depression, some no meaning and purpose at all, why they have been falling at a very young age for love. Some thinking if I don't marry this guy or that girl, he dies or she dies. And then what happens? The parents get married, having one or two children again. That girl falls in love with some other guy. <laughs> and they think it's really fulfilling the lust of the flesh is of a lie. And they say, while I was in teens, I fell in love with that guy. But now I have been with experience, single, but with experience ready to mingle. <laughs> Whom they're trying to make up their life to be impressed. Dear brother, you are not designed to die if you would have obeyed the commandments of the word of Lord God. The metamorphisms of your body doesn't indicate that you have to go to the king of Assyria. The first thing what man wickedly devises is to cut off your thinking from the solid source. Though he said in Isaiah, Eng may fail, youth may vanish, but they that are in the Lord of a God will renew their strength like eagle. First, those promises should be cut off. The life like Moses, 120 years old, that life shall not be inculcated for you. It has to be cut off. 
Caleb said, I am 85, yet I have in me the vigor like 40. That life, that, that sentence should be cut off. You know how we cannot realize them in our life? Automatically, you are not able to live such life. You are not able to grow up to such life. So quite obviously, what happens? Cut off. You cannot claim which you do not know. You cannot know which you do not make up your heart to learn. Or invest your time in learning that. Or make up your time in learning that. You cannot. You cannot learn which you do not know. And you cannot learn when you don't have a desire to know that the world has nothing to offer to us except the mind's inventions. And the only one thing what you can look is to make up your life, to learn what are the divine standards. But you have been ever learning, pantote mantano, you are ever learning. You're all the time learning. But you're not coming to be the disciples who program to the Lord. You're ever learning like disciples, but you're coming weekly once. He said, ever learning. Second Timothy 3, 7, you will learn. Pantote, Mantano. And then what do you do? Never able. The word, Medepote. Followed by, the word called to be dunamai. So, never you are able to come or erkomai to reach, to come, to arise, to be established. Where you are not able to reach? To the epinosis, full knowledge of aletheia, the truth. That's a great problem for you which you are not able to recognize what is happening wrong. You're thinking you're really living a life worthy of God. But you have been far away from the solid base, the solid reason. Therefore, dear brother, in Ezekiel chapter 11, you know the beautiful word, what does he say? I will give them the flesh heart by removing from them the thing which is called the stone heart. In Ezekiel 11:19. I will give them one heart. It is called, again, the word ekat. The word heart is lab. Meant to say, to make up your body, to be <coughs> the discipleship program. So I will make them to be one heart. And I will put a new spirit. Again, the spirit doesn't mean to say new, something where you're having. The new spirit meant to say fresh, kadash. What is that kadash? Once again, get back to the thinking of the wall of fortification by getting every thought into captivity for Christ. That's the new, that's the Kadash, that which has to be something through proper repair, restoration and replacement. That's what it has to be, something new. So what happens when it is something new, Kadash? You're going to look into the standards of getting once again. How is it if it, the Bible says at the age of 120 years, Moses' eyesight was not dimmed, his vigor and valor in his body was not abated, then how much more today in the present 21st century our need is to the Lord in the midst of this crisis where the word of Lord God is not at all been known, the word of Lord God is not at all been taught, the word of Lord God is not at all been emphasized, then how much more God the Father requires my body to be wholly kept, sanctified, preserved for the work of Lord God rather than inculcating in drug, dope or any mannerism of ruin to your body. How could it be? So, you know, you should ask this question. If Moses got such promise and he was able to look to the man face to face in the presence of the Lord, then now being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, how much more we ought to be being indwelled by the Trinity then how we are dying sick? Man should think this question. Not your hereditary, not your psychopath reasons, not your childhood environments. 
You know, all these are stupid alibis, stupid excuses being created by one's own brainchild imaginations because he can defend them. The duty of the parents is to guide them, to lead them, to know the word of Lord God and the book of the man till he could read his right mate or right woman or right man. It is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Learn, no. And you're falling in love with the word of Lord God, you don't have anyone loved by anyone to be loved. All of the things when they try to attract you, they will be just to deceive you. Because they want to trap you out. They want to drive you out from the word of Lord God. That's what they try, that's what they do. So you need not worry about that. But what do you do? You're having love affair with Lord God. So you go to learn the word of the Lord in such a manner, you're going to make useful meaning of your life. Something valuable. Something more precious than what Moses could use his body. He longed everyone could be filled with Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and that's what we are right now in the church age. And just look the way how these people, they're dying. You know why they die? Because they say dialysis is one of the problem. They say sugar is one of the problem. They say BP is one of the problem. They say such and such, all reasons, and ultimately they come up with age factor. That's what they try to give, reasons. And a man doesn't realize the true reason is that he has sinned against the Lord. He's not growing up into grammar tears. He's not becoming the disciple. He's not becoming that which has been demanded in the word of Lord God. He doesn't realize that. He doesn't come back and look and understand the real plan of God the Father. Though he has given us day by day to be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, he doesn't look like a Kadesh. And then you know what does he say? I will take away stony heart, that which you have built up until now as your vigor and valor. He said, I will remove that and I will give you a heart of a flesh. The word Baser, you know what is it meant to say? The thing which has been associated to get good news. The real meaning of Baser or report is nothing but good news is bought. That's what you are here, been given this flesh to spread the good news rather than building up with the clause and terms and conditions of the vigor and valor of man's building up of life, or man's way of life. So that's what he said, stony heart I will remove, I will give you a heart of a flesh. Stony heart will make you to understand the terms and conditions of this flesh with the age-related problems and any other things. That's what man look into now. But the flesh heart says, till the day you die, like the way how Moses was being taken, till the day you have to stay fit, vigor and valor, having your eyesight not dimmed, because your flesh has been given to the work and to the praise of Lord God's glory. That's what you have been called. Till the day you die, you have to be so so careful about your flesh because your body is called now to be the temple of the living Lord of God and who will go for us? It is what we, we have to be like Moses. We have to be greater than Moses, as he said, walking like John the Baptist and greater than John the Baptist. Anyone who has been born least in this kingdom, you have to be representing Christ. So you cannot stay sick. That's what he said. I will give you a flesh of a heart. Don't rely upon the rupture car conditions. Don't rely upon the age-related problems of this life, saying that you're 40, you're 20, you're 60, you're 80. The greater you grow old, the greater you should say, I shall not die but live. What you will do by living? I will declare the works of the Lord. You know what a beautiful life it would be. Declaring to live or to show forth the works of the Lord our God. You know what a beautiful life it is. It's a marvelous life. Whether you understand it or not, it's a marvelous life. It's a great faithful life.
And that's what these people are today. They're not able to realize what is that great marvelous life in Christ. They're not able to live such a life. <laughs> so dear brethren, he says, I will not die but live for what to declare the works of the Lord. The same thing, the reason why I shall give you the uh, the flesh heart rather than the stony heart is to go and make disciples of all the nations. So these are the men that are devising mischief. The word mischief is nothing but they are simply taking away the strength and the vigor of your body. And what they're giving? And they're giving wicked counsel, distorted thinking. And the word counsel, fixing your eyes under pressure for the solutions of men rather than by faith waiting upon the Lord to get divine solutions from Bible doctrine. That's what they are trying to give you, wicked counsel. They fix your eyes in such a manner that they want to talk as per the terms of the pressures of this world. And that's a sad thing for us. And then what does he say? In the city, the word city meant to say distorted thinking in their head, which say it is not near, let us build houses. This city is a caldron and we be the flesh. The word flesh meant to say we will be the good news. Therefore prophesy against them, prophesy your son of man. And the spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said unto me, Speak, thus said the Lord God, thus have you said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. You have multiplied your slain in this city, and you have filled the streets thereof with the slain. The word slain meant to say, again, uh, emphasizing kalal, that is, fatally wounded. And then, therefore, thus said the Lord God, your slain whom you have laid in the midst of it, they are the flesh, and the city is a caldron. The word caldron is nothing but your brother and meant to say it is like a seer or it is like the standards of fish hook. So he says that these are having under pressure they had to be renovated. That's the word caldron, the pictographical representation. But I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. You have feared the sword and I will bring a sword upon you, said the Lord God. I will bring you out of the midst thereof and deliver you into the hands of the strangers and will execute judgments among you. You shall fall by the sword. I will judge you in the border of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord. This city shall not be your caldron, that is meant to say fish hook, neither shall you be the flesh in the midst thereof, but I will judge you in the border of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord for you have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgments. You know, that's the main problem. When you shall know that he is Lord God, because you are not walking in his statutes. That's what you fail in your trials. You get your pressures. You get your sickness, the five cycles of disciplines. You should realize that time at least you are not walking in the statutes. Neither you are building up the judgments. Neither you have done after the manners of uh, but you have done after the manners of the heathen that are round about you. So when you fail to be to looking upon the judgments or the statutes, that meant to say you are walking as per the demands of the heathen. So it came to pass when I prophesied that Pelatia, the son of Benia, died. The word Pelatia is nothing but your brethren, as meant to say, Jehovah delivers. So how does Jehovah Lord of God delivers? He said, Palat when you are fixing your mouth to become as a disciple and your body to be as per the disciple of the word of Lord God. So, Jehovah, what he builds, the son Benaniah, meant to say he dieth. Then fell I down upon my face and cried, because the word Pelatia, or taken from the word of the origin, called to be Palat, as Jehovah delivers. Palat meant to say, you know, when you're fixing your mouth as a disciple to grow up. So he said, Lord, is there this people, will you make an full end of the remnant of Israel? The word full end meant to say, if these people are not growing in making disciples of all the nations, then are going to kill them up. Then 
the word of the Lord our God came unto me, saying, Son of man, the brethren, even the brethren, the men of the kindred, and all the house of Israel, holy, and they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get you far from the Lord unto us in this land, given in possession. Therefore say, Thus said the Lord God, All that have cast them far off among the heathen, and all that have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Therefore say, Thus said the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come there, and they shall take away all the detestable things, that is, that which is filthy, in the thought process, under pressure, what they have built up in their thinking. And uh, thereof, all that which is an abomination, which is a sign of authority, what they have put, he said, And I will give them one heart, and I will put a one sp new spirit within them. And I will take away the stony heart out of the flesh, and I will give them the heart of a flesh, that they may walk in my statutes. Again, the word walk is what your brethren, he doesn't cancel, saying that if you are not a disciple, if you are not growing up into grammatics, I will accept you. No, he says, if you walk, again, you like a discipleship growing up into grammatics. That is the only key with the Lord God. He cannot change his word. He cannot alter. When Ezekiel is falling on the death of Palatia, saying that, Lord, I'm going to destroy all the remnant, then he says this sequence, I'll give them a new heart, rather I'll give them a new spirit, I'll give them a flesh heart rather than a stony heart. And then he goes to tell, if they walk, again, the word walk over here in Ezekiel 11.20 emphasizes the point, yeah, like if they would come to become disciples into grammatias, if they would walk in my prescription demands and shamir my ordinances and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And then he said, But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of the detestable things, what they have put upon to be like a filthy things, I will, and their abominations, I will recompense, I will give them their way. Again, the word way is what, you know, dear brethren, their wreck. That meant to say what? Their course of life, their manner of life. What they were, the manner of life, their every thought was not renovated to be like a scribe. Their every thought was not becoming as per the demands of the word of Lord God. Therefore, I will recompense they were upon their own heads, saith the Lord God. Then did the cherubims lift up their wings. You know, that's what he's giving this counsel, particularly when he was being lifted up by the cherubims to give. You know, people are not able to realize today this marvelous revolution of the ministry wherewith we have to be from scribes into the cherubim level of thinking. So here he said, the cherubims lift up their wings and the wheels beside them, and the glory of God of Israel was over them above. And the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city and stood upon the mountain, which is on to the east side of the city. Afterwards, the Spirit <coughs> took me up and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God in Chaldean. The word Chaldea, what we call, meant to say, cold breakers. So what these people, they do, they go on to be in the standards of making to increase their life and to them to the captivity. So the vision that I had seen went up from me, then I spake unto them of the captivity of all the things that the Lord hath showed me. All the things, that's very, very important. Today the church is not able to preach all the things. The head is not renovated as per the demands of the word of Lord God. They're not able to talk all the things, that which has been called to be taken as into captivity. So, dear brethren, he said, unto them that are in captivity, those we point of life as disciples to the Christ. So, he said, these are the men who are not able to talk as per the captivity of Christ, as per the thinking of Christ. So, he says unto them, he's talking. Gola, he's talking. For the captivity who have been given for discipleship program, who have been looking not to the standards of the thinking of men like Ashur, who have coming up to devise the standards of their own thinking, but is talking to them who have firmly made up their mind like a flint heart, like a rock. And that's what we need to look actually in Ezekiel. I have made your head to be 
flint like harder than a rock. You have those words to be the pictographical representation to say, no matter what, whether they hear or forbear, you make them to be the disciples of the word of Lord God, flint like a rock. So he says, dear brother, that I have taken you from the captivity, all the things that the Lord God has shown, and what the things the cherubims are reflecting, Though Ezekiel fell upon the, 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 the angel of the Lord and claims, Lord, after the death of Pilate, you are going to destroy all the remnant, not you're going to live. He said, he gives a solution. What? Walk in my statutes. And today the church, though you have been given to feed upon the rich food, much has been given, much has been expected from us. The rich food of knowing to become disciples into grammatias, the rich food of taking up your cross and following my Christ. <coughs> You're still dying potakas day by day, begging even for to realize the real life. Because you are digging and taking the false things of this life to the number one priority on this earth. Therefore you are dying like unbelievers. You are dying like those 3.2 billion people who do not know Christ, who are not acquainted with the Lord. The things such and such is said, commonly spoken among these unbelievers men you are living such a life it has been commonly named what to eat what to drink what to wear the things what they practice in darkness all those things you are looking and are thinking that is the life and a Christian cannot be so when he's been given the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit to indwell in them he is called strictly a heavenly citizen to the Lord And having been given such sort of heavenly citizen life in Christ, if you are not able to become the disciples of the word of Lord God, what worth is this life? <laughs> so the remnant to be destroyed, he claims the reason, because they were not disciples, they were not grown up into grammatias, they did not go to make disciples of all the nations. If you are not able to get back and walk as per the prescription demands of the word of Lord God, then let Lord help you. Because life is too short to spend in search of vanity, to think if in the Milky Way galaxy if there are so many stars, 300 to 400 times of that Milky Way galaxies are there in your brain. Then how much of information, if you have been given as per the demands of the word of Lord God, how you can live a life for 120 years by pleasing the will of Lord God the Father. Though you are at the age of 120, you should say now, like the way Caleb said, I am just 55 years old. The week of what I had at the age of 55 to 60, I still possess in me. I need to yet do the Lord's battle, the Lord's work. If Satan is able to perform such sort of strength and work on this earth, then how much more the Lord's people ought to be in Christ, waiting to fulfill only the will of Lord God the Father. Dear brethren, life is too short to spend our time in vanity. Don't waste the valuable grace of Lord of a God in vanity, but rather become to be the true disciples, growing up disciples, and become the pale wonders of his word to be shined in this church age. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. We shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, liveth us to the praise of his glory in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head, bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In audibly telling to Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. We shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for so very simple. Believe in Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. By which you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to care so turn lagan. Herald the word in season out of them, because the Dharma to my witnesses for it have been called. The number one Dharma to my witnesses in Belling Trinity, if all the Bible in our hands. And number two, Dharma to my witnesses, so hear us. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire and the course will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. 
So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, led us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, what a marvelous privilege, O Lord, to redeem the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to walk in the statutes, to fulfill your commandments, and to be all the time ready to have a heart which is of flesh rather than stone being built up as per the viewpoint of life of this man. So, Father, teach us to understand the real power, the real work of your Spirit in the Word of Lord God, which could make each and every believer to realize and to understand what a, power, what a marvelous wonders of life it is to day by day establish according to the Word, to day by day live according to the thinking, and to go and make disciples of all the nations, for which cause you have called us to be in the pride of your list, and the people who are going to be in the bride of the list are those men who are going to be really grown up into grammatiers, and in return who are going to make disciples of all the nations. To such a great unique life you have called us in this church, O Lord, we don't deserve it, that you have given us that high, holy, heavenly calling of standards of life, to go and make disciples of all the nations and to fulfill your pile of wonders to this earth. So, Father, help us to shine forth till the day we live, or whichever could come first, the rapture or death. That, O oh Lord, we want each and every breath to be accountable in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in giving you that maximum glory which is due unto the name in every past, to the work for which you have called us through your, Lord and, through your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.